There we go. Okie dokie. I was getting up to stretch my legs for a quick second. <laughs> ah, I need to do the boogie boogie. <laughs> yeah, it's very... Yes, I, I usually have pretty bad timing. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Yeah, when you gotta dance, you gotta dance, no ma matter when it comes. Yeah, when you feel the groove, you gotta bust the moves. <laughs> See, we are alive. Oh yeah, fellow. I also, I always forget that I have to, um, what's it called? Make the, um, I did do the tweet. I sadly can tag you when I tweet through the stuffy. But I still need to make the, what's it called? Yeah, send, send it in all this, the different Discord servers. Let's see. There we go. Let's see. So, um, yeah, uh, Poofy, you have already given the story about your OC, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, so then it's just empty in Orsk, we need to ask. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Brief, uh, a brief cl uh, cliff notes. Po uh, ha Half po pony, half giraffe, and yeah, don't get to get much briefer than that. <laughs> nope. But again, it's still interesting that she ended up having magic. Wasn't that because of her El uh, unicorn father? The uh, unicorn mother. The father ah. was the giraffe in the in that uh, partnership. Ah, that's that's the Bahuta. Uh, well, did you ever tell the story about how they ended up together? Uh, no, I have not. I've not exactly worked that out. Well, do you want to try? <laughs> huh? All I can say for certain is that, yeah, when you when you got I got an abnormally tall a tall unicorn and a really runty giraffe and put them together, you get a poppy. Puffy, a la poofy, as I say, <laughs> <laughs> because it sounds adorable. <laughs> Let's show sun and there and copy and paste. Let's come show. We have viewers! Hello, viewers! Welcome, welcome, welcome to you and you and you. <laughs> so, today I have the glorious Poofy, or Niriu, so that I never can pronounce. <laughs> My bad. There you go. <laughs> and we have DMT, which does a lot of fancy fancy stuff for Fiora the Tank Girl, or the, one, or the Wandering Sunrise Company. Mm, yada. Shotgun Angel, thank you. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> And we have the ever adorable Orsk Winterhelm. Say hello. hello. Please. So, uh, as you guys can probably notice while you are watching the stream itself, its photo, we actually have a human OC. So, how about you tell us a little bit about the. Like well, backstory, why you have a an human and that type of stuff, if you're comfortable with it. Well, that is a long story. That actually goes back to, I think, a now shut down website or now. Um, it was a um, writing site called Dalewen. D-A-E-L-U-I-N. It was set up where you would write posts in this... Um, fantasy realm there now so there would be these maps with these different regions that you could write posts in and the thing is you could only use the items you've bought using the on-site currency which you earn by writing posts so however many words you get x amount of gold oh interesting so um i was on that site for a while there now and or squinter helm is actually my character from there he comes from the frigid ice isles e. he was the son well 
I never really did get around to naming his mother and father, but uh, he's sort of a, bar- a barbarian of sorts. Went out um, into the frigid wasteland to um, sort of um, make a life for himself for now, to maybe make a name for himself. But he was found by a rather powerful and nasty um, practitioner of the dark arts. And not only that, but she was maybe a wee bit demonic. Okay, oof, though. So things happened, and Orsk Winterhelm went from being a human barbarian into being a... um, Weird, half alive, half undead entity. His limbs are pretty skeletal, save for maybe the upper portion of his right arm, the upper portion of his left leg, but he's quite um, bleached white there now, and um, he has a rather nasty thing there now when it comes to magic being used around him. It causes <laughs> pain. He is able to pick up on the magical auras of things being done around him, and through this sensory um, overload of Swordster now, it actually causes him pain. Not only that, of others using spells, but also when he use of magic. Because this system was um, you could be different classes, and as you do poster now, you can sort of level yourself up and like you now and to become a like new like um hybrid classes and like now but the thing is magic was universal as long as you pick up the actual spell you can use it mm-hmm. so that was um it for both divine and arcane magic after now as it had a very nice little like store system for it now so it starts you up with like a few little like um knickknacks and like now to sort of like give you things to make use of as you make posts with other people or post just to yourself and things of that nature. So it was a nice little um, uh, community of sorts to be a part of. Um, there were guilds and like you could join into, but Horace Quinterhelm is, like I said, he is half human, half undead. He's the glorious in between. Or is his, um, in, or in his view, the cursed in between? Oh, okay. I, I, sorry. I kind of want to make. Oh, he's a zombie. <laughs> sorry. Not zombie. No, I know, I know. I, it was just a joke. Sorry. No worries. But yeah, he's sort of a weird blending of positive and negative energy. That's hmm. sort of what keeps him alive. He can be healed by both the positive and negative energies and the like, you know, but he sort of gets it a little halfway. He doesn't get the full effect from it. Ah. So okay. he is the glorious half-dead. Hmm. Sounds like a TV series. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I also want to say hi to Hedy, my uh, loyal and faithful uh, mod, 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 mod. Mother. Oh, hey, it's a Yeah, it's a hitty. It's a chifetti. It's a chifetti. Yes, that's his new chifetti. name. Chifetti. <laughs> <laughs> and thank Achifundo you. Achifundo so- has entered the chat. Yes. Also, thank you so much for uh, following Agent BW. Also, uh, Joris. Ah, nice to see that you were in the live stream yesterday. That's nice. And hello, everybody. Thank you so much for dropping by. And final sight, I boop you back. Yes, it's Chifetti now because you're confetti <laughs> with a lot of life in it. Chifetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, so that is Orsk's background. So you kept him of sentimental value or... Uh, because you didn't want the pony OC, if it's okay, I ask. Well, I mean, it was my first ever creation in that likeness, so it sort of has become basically my OC, my sort of internet persona. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But you never wanted a pony OC or dragon OC or uh, griffin or <laughs> Sony? <laughs> I haven't really thought of it to be honest. Like I said, I I just feel comfortable just 
with with who I am, which at this point in time is of course Winterhelm. Okie dokie. So, our little blue pwn, do you want to start? Um, this, is, this is the part where I completely spaghetti, I guess. <laughs> spaghetti! <laughs> I'm never the best at thinking on the fly. <laughs> well, <laughs> or uh, test. Yeah. so then I can ask you instead, why did you choose an earth pony? Hmm. Okay, uh... Okay, so I had taken a ton of time to basically research into because I had never made my own original character before. Mm -hmm. So me being me, I decided to sit down and I did a... I tried to research as much as I could on the different races and kind of just how they per were portrayed and everything. And I kind of settled on the Earth Bunny because... Um... Well, okay. Okay, this is the part where I start going moon and be the goldfish. Um <laughs> Moopa, Moopa. Yes, I go, I, I go full Moopa with goldfish. Moopa. Um, okay, I, can't I can never really tell anything linearly. It's always me bouncing one thing to another. Ah, uh, that's okay. Some stories are told like that, and that's okay. Yeah. Um. So I was in the process because I had already decided on the name for Arcane Gears. Well, while I was in the process of creating him. I had accidentally discovered there was another character, and I was like, oh, there's someone with the exact same name. Well, okay. Oops. Small jump forward two years ahead of time, and I figured out that the difference was actually a single letter. <laughs> awesome. It, it was Arcane Gear as opposed to Arcane Gears, which Arcane Gears is mine. Uh, and, well, that other OC was a unicorn, so I was like, you know what, I'll go Earth Pony and roll with it. So, then the funny thing is, is it actually, uh, because in the, because I mean, it's like unicorns, oh, they have magic and everything. Well, I wanted, I kind of thought it'd be a fun idea to go with uh, an Earth Pony who prefers to use magic, because basically anyone who knows me, at least IRL, when playing at the table, I really enjoy magic, uh, magic items and tabletop games. That's because fair. of just the creativity that can come from them. Mm -hmm. So I kind of dealt into that realm. And so I just kind of went with, you know, the Earth Pony who enjoys just studying unicorn magic and the other kinds of magic and everything. Though the whole thing with random kind of came a little later with she running the Saturday games a couple years ago. Because this is actually the character I made for that game. In like, ah. I think, three days. And I was like, oh, okay, random is a trade. Oh, okay, um, that sounds kind of fun because he's not, he, he's basically like Sunrise in the case of he doesn't really know how to do basic Earth Pony stuff. <laughs> yeah, Earth Pony that can't Earth. Hmm, the yes, can't can go wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's definitely not a case where... Uh, only well, in Snips have joked about it, where his cooking has basically become a case of uh, don't let him cook, otherwise he'll end up blowing up the kitchen or setting it on fire by accident. Yeah, sounds like my type of cooking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, uh... No yeah, I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't really cook that. I, I don't have the knowledge really to cook that well. The cooking is hard. <laughs> cooking is indeed hard. <laughs> Fast food, they, yay. They, they, they <laughs> said they that cooking is supposed to be fun, but I don't know what's so fun about setting off the smoke alarms when you're making a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, <laughs> And then if, like, I think I'm very lucky that I started eating more and more vegan because for some reason I do not get as stressed and there's less thing to destroy because vegetables can handle a lot compared to meat and egg and all that other stuff. Like vegetables are durable. <laughs> uh, at least that's my experience. But sorry, we're getting off track. Continue, MT. That's fine. Um... And then from there, it's just a case of random didn't require GM approval for that because it was just a case of me trying to select together the rules and it just kind of became part of his character. And I've slowly been playing that same character. And actually recently I've been 
kind of expanding with additional characters and stuff where I've actually gone more in depth with story and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still having to get better at it, but I have a griffin who doesn't have a ref sheet called Adina, and she's basically the driver in our 1920s uh, Prohibition era style game. Mm -hmm. And that one's it's it's pretty fun. Uh, and then I have another character called Flak Jacket for the uh, for the Night Haze pen and paper system, which is based in the Sun Jackers universe. That wait, one, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Sun Jacket, like, uh... uh. Sun Jackers. Hang on, let me just. Uh, uh, let me take it in the chat. Yeah, because it sounds very familiar, but it's like, what? Okay, I think it is the one that I'm thinking about. It's basically a Pegasi with like a green mane and orange or yellow yes. body, and she yes. can't fly because her, like, uh. Cybernetics are too heavy. Yes! Okay, super. Then I know where yes, it is. Thank yes, you. That's Adam Smasher. And the funny part is, is I actually know Adam Smasher from uh, Duck and Cover and the sequel, make, uh, I believe it was called Make Love Not War, if memory serves. Ah, okay. So I, I know Adam from there. And I think the funny part was, I remember reading that comic and at first, because uh, I can relate to one of the comments, it's like, wait a minute. You're not you're 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 a mayor, and actually all of the characters in the comic strip actually have a good laugh about it, because I thought this whole time while reading through the books that Adam was actually a stallion. No. <laughs> but yeah, crud. Now we're kind of rambling off again. Oh wait, oh right. Um, well, and then actually um, for that... Orcs, uh Redhurst game, I actually have uh, Skippy. Hey. Yep. Oh, Skippy. So much trouble that you've gotten yourself into. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I can give you a picture of um, what Skippy looks like, Chris, if you wish. Yeah. Wait, oh, I don't have an exact reference. It's just more of a placeholder image. Yeah, that that's, yeah, that's we... fair. Yeah, we just got a placeholder one for now. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. So, you ended up the, with the name and an earth pony because of the other person named uh, I don't feel comfortable showing that, sorry Oh, I, no. I know, that's why I threw uh, it in, in the DM here Yeah, sorry I thought it was about a pony <laughs> Oh <laughs> Yeah, sorry uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Skippy's an android Yeah, okay, that is let me see if I can find a token because I have. Yeah. Let me find the image. Uh, there we go. There we go. There's something. Oh, it. it's two megabytes. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you ended up with an Earth pony and the name. Yeah, that's cute too. That's very cute too. Um. Why did you choose the colors that you did? And clothing, and that he actually has glasses? Uh, actually, the funny thing is, is uh, I actually went color theory on him. Ooh. Okay. So I ended up going with the blue, and I can't remember the... I found... I looked up a bunch of meanings buying colors, and I rolled with them, and I... Okay, I know neighbor might get a small laugh out of this, but I think the blue was because it was calm, if I remember right, and he is sometimes not calm in the slightest. <laughs> uh, I think the green was something like intelligence or something, and then the yellow was just because uh, color theory. And actually, um, I think through the few art pieces that I've gotten of him, I'm actually really enjoying the yellow because it always seems like for artists, it's like, okay, you need to draw gold eyes, and it's just like something unlocks within them. Hmm. And they always manage to do a great job. But, yeah. Uh. So, do you have any backstory for this uh, character? Um... Okay, this is where the fun begins because it actually <laughs> depends. Because I, okay, because I'm in the better part for a year or two, I couldn't play anything other than him because he was the only one I felt comfortable playing in a tabletop game. Ah. Um, yeah, I've seen a few versions of him over, over the various incarnations. Uh, yeah, because, uh, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, small rewind. 
Yeah. Uh, because the thing is, it started out as a uh, more of a pony Sona, and then it kind of became more of an OC, and then it kind of it kind of flicks between the two. Uh, ended up going, I think, what was it? I think he's out of like Appaloosa, and I think he had a unicorn mother and a Earth pony father, if memory serves. I know I didn't name them, that's why I can relate to Orsk. <laughs> um, they just kind of. I out. might have named mine, but that was. That was like over a decade ago to now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Orsk Winterhelm is an old, old, old say. I think like 2008 ish. Wow. Yeah, he's from out of like the Appaloosa, Appaloosa area, just because then I can just kind of keep the whole accent and everything, which is actually a uh, twang instead of a drawl. Because uh, kind of roughly where I'm from, we have more of a twang as opposed to the drawl, where drawl is more drawing it out and twang is kind of more that shorter. Uh, for example, a lot of like going and stuff. We might drop the G and just kind of enunciate a little extra, and I'm pretty sure. I know English isn't your first language, so that's going to be, a, <laughs> that might be a little confusing. Uh. Yeah, I'm kind of spaghettiing a little. That is okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have his parents, and where did he grow up? Like, was he in the wasteland? Were he in the normal Ponyville? Or were um, he Crystal Empire? Or uh, it was actually Appaloosa in the in the. Actually, I blame this partially because of uh, because of Fee's uh, Saturday game because it. The game takes place a few months after because that Saturday game took only a few months after the end of the world. Oh. So he's still technically pre war. And I've kept that through everything. So I've rolled with it. So then it also works in a non Fallout Equestria setting. Mm -hmm. So I stick with the whole Appaloosa area and that kind of that kind of plays into his whole kind of having that bit of a southern accent a bit. Mm hmm. So, um, so you're yeah. going around south and like or coming from Appaloosa? Yeah, from Appaloosa. <laughs> Appaloosa? Yeah, Appaloosa! There you go. <laughs> now you gotta go for the long <laughs> Appaloosa! <laughs> or all the other in between. <laughs> okay, so we know where he comes from. Uh, his parents. So, how was his childhood? Like, were he like normal kid in the playground, or were he one that helped more at home, or like? I, I kind of because this is my first character. I based a fair amount of it on my own, and then while also putting its <laughs> own twist. Um, of course, he he had pretty much an okay childhood, basically, which became kind of a running joke of he is apparently the one who isn't traumatized by the wasteland. Yay! No traumatized! Yay! And he doesn't pull a haze and has to... <laughs> he doesn't have to pull out a blunt. I know Hedy, Hedy knows what I mean. Oh dear. <laughs> Chifetti! What have you done to people? I thought you were the nice guy. Wee. <laughs> doing? He's relaxing. He's just using a chemical substance to help him relax. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, sorry, I missed that. What did I do? I've been to your character in the FOE game for now. Uh... Now we smoke a blunt every time that weird. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't Chifando. Chifando wasn't the one with the blunt. It was Hayes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, sorry. I'm 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 sor
<laughs> I'm sorry, Hetty. <laughs> I'm sorry, Hetty. That's just me. <laughs> Hetty is like, I'm framed. <laughs> yeah. What? Okay. okay. I'm curious. I'm curious. Is there a lawyer in the wasteland? <laughs> Probably a few. Probably um, among the ghouls, I'd wager. See. <laughs> Hetty, remember, if you're being framed as um, as medicinal haste, that means you have a bunch of gold now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's got the gold bars. The thing is, though, in the recent sessions, he's, that gold bar has kind of got them into a little bit of trouble. So, more, even more trouble. <laughs> what? what? Sunrise Mumbles was a lawyer? Yeah, she oh, actually was, was, wasn't she? I was actually, wondering uh, what her job was. Raise his hand in lore horse. Um, <laughs> she was indeed a player, and then she became a combat medic uh, whenever the war picked up. Ah, makes sense. Mm hmm. Makes sense. Also, boop back final sight because I don't remember if I booped him back. Um, okay, so uh, what is uh, 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 Autumn? Yeah, Autumn Gear. Hmm, yeah, Autumn. Uh, Arcana Gear, what does he do now? Ar Ar Arcane, my um, bad. Okay, so uh, this this is the fun part because uh, it depends on the iteration. Um, the primary iterate. Uh, okay, so I have two primary iterations. I have one that I kind of use for table uh, for uh, other games, and then the Dentry one gets to be special and have its own iteration. Ooh. Um. So what? Uh, okay. So in the non Dentry iteration, it's a case of. Uh, he ran as an intern for the Ministry of Wartime Technology while also working under the Ministry of Morale under the Birthday Brigade, which actually I decided to bring back for the Dead Tree iteration. <laughs> Birthday! Uh, because in the main fic, um, in the main Fallout Questioner story, Pinkie Pie still throws parties and everything. And I want to, and I use the logic of there is no way she is getting around, at least with a, without a little bit of help. And that's where the Birthday Brigade comes in. And they basically kind of help uh, throw parties for everyone's birthdays. Okay, uh, sorry for the noise in the background. This basement is hecking cold, so we're gonna. I need oh. to have the basement uh, heater on a little bit. No, oh, fine. I have that feeling. It's cold up this way too. Yeah. I, I I had that feeling a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yes. Oh uh. yeah, true. When Texas just froze over. Yeah, poor yeah. Texas. <laughs> poor, poor little Texas. They were freezing. Boing. Like I. To be fair, they weren't prepared for that. No, though. they were I'm not. I'm surprised they that they weren't. The thing is, like it's like in Norway, we would never. I don't think we have prepared for like suddenly we get like a. Uh, uh, Florida summer heat. Like, we would be very confused and taken off guard. Like, what? <laughs> True. Well, I know, I, know first, I, I know I have a few friends in Arizona. Apparently, it rained so hard one day, but then it got so hot that the concrete was soaked. They could hear the water sizzling as it went straight to boiling. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, uh, I, when the one time I was in Arizona, uh, there were snowing one day, so there was like was like twenty centimeters of snow on the car, but then the other day it was beaming hot sun, and you could just see small puddles of water just disappearing in front of your eyes, and I was just like, we are not in Norway anymore. <laughs> uh, but that was a really fun experience. So yeah, I haven't heard the crackling uh, as asphalt. Um, Concrete, but asphalt. Uh, yeah, asphalt. Yeah. Uh, asphalt and concrete are two separate things, if I remember right. Yeah, in Norway it's called asphalt. So I'm I'm kind of having the Stavanger English, where we kind of put uh, the Norwegian word and the English word together, and there you have a new word that hopefully both understand. Oh, <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, because the uh, asphalt is more black, while concrete is more of a gray white. Ah, well, so that's um, the difference. Asphalt is usually used for roads, whereas concrete is used for actual structures. 
usually mm -hmm. with them rebar reinforcement inside of it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Rothwick says Pinkie Pie s s Pinky still throws parties in FAO. Guess that puts Sunrise as premier party pony if her tail has anything to say about it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that would be fair. True. And uh, film, what do you mean by Twilight Sparkle? That's a bit random. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. Is there anything else in his backstory that you would like to tell us? Like, is, uh, is there any drive for him? Like, what does he do, the things he do? What is he seeking? What is his goal? Uh, basically in that, and then also in the Dead Tree iteration, there's more added on, uh, because the, because, um, yeah, he does make a cameo, hey. and, uh, he does actually, uh, he works under the Ministry of Arcane Science, so he's been under three of the six ministries. That we do. Yep. But, um, then from there, uh, Apparently he runs into Martini Marker Light and they get to know each other and all that jazz. Um, I'm trying to remember from there. Um, then they have some additional adventures and stuff. Then the end of the war happens and that's the part where I have to kind of look at Moon and go, okay, apparently everything in this one period is either is both canon and not canon because we don't know. And then from there... I am actually currently in the pregame with Moon because I um, I'm supposed yeah because I am supposed to appear in the Wednesday game uh, e. this upcoming Wednesday hopefully because this day can be in Moon a couple of weeks to actually get through my pregame. E. Um, I'll probably have to hold off from saying too much there. Yes, because that's I don't fair. Want to be a bit of surprise because Heavy's in the chat, so I can't <laughs> say too much. However. <laughs> I know this will make Nairobi a little bit happy. Yes, he managed to sneak in an anime reference already. Yay! <laughs> an ex-criminal by the name of... Let me find it. Spoilers! Name. Spoilers! Stop it! Spoilers! Hedy Jafetti is saying spoilers! Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll damn it to Nairobi in a minute. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Also, uh, Final Sight is wondering, what is your favorite type of cheese? Type of tea? Cheese! Cheese! Oh, oh, type of cheese. I yeah. kind of feel like I would go with mozzarella. No, it's called Jack. That's what's called. Not mozzarella. Colby Jack is mozzarella and cheddar. Nah, not brown cheese. No. No. <laughs> I'd say that's, that's as good an answer as anybody you, you could get. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a joke because I've been sending brown cheese to so many people. <laughs> oh boy. Ah, oh, so yeah, then we have the OCs. Um, all of you have uh, RPG, uh, pen and paper RPG. Uh, am I using the right words? I think I am. Experience. Thank you. No so, how? Did you guys get into our pen and paper RPGs in the first place? Eh, the Wednesday game. Okay. Um, uh, I joined in some <laughs> friends games, actually. So how did you do that? Like, did they invite you? Did you invite yourself? Did you fall out they of the heaven? <laughs> then started the um, adventures of the dwarven cleric um went um the life um cleric of pelor that was um that was fun that was yeah. quite fun but yeah they were running a game down at a local um game shop in um the capital city that I was in at the moment or now while i was um, going to university oh, okay so... so i joined in on their stuff and uh Things happened. A lot of insanity happened. Hmm. Well, was that 5th edition or any other? They were running a 5B game. Oh, okay. What about you, MT? 
Um, actually, I got my start in 5e as well, because um, I had my small little group of friends, and because all of us being absolute nerds, I guess all of us had heard about D&D at some point, and uh, one of our friends was just like, hey, why don't we try this out? And, well, that led to a whole series of really silly little mini sessions, which then we kind of stopped for a bit, and then uh, a friend of mine was like, you know what, um, I'll give a shot at giving at GMing these games, and that led to a whole other campaign. Which that one was that was pretty fun. And then from there, I did a bit of that. Um, then my local, well, that well, not local, but um, the college I go to, we they had a D and D club, and I ended up into another game there. Well, except that wasn't D&D, that was um, a D6 dice system called Lasers and Feelings, which that was pretty fun. Because it was kind of just like generic space tabletop with a game, and it just used only uh, six-sided dice. Oh. But a little bit before that, I had, uh, I actually found the, uh, the dead tree system through uh, finding uh, Sonic West Dead Tree. Okay. And I've been doing tabletops for like, I think, what, four years now? Four or five years? Yeah, oh gosh. I, I am the newbie at almost every table I play at. No, 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 it's not that. It's just uh, how time has flown since I first started playing RPGs, pen and paper RPGs. Uh, I think, how long has it been for you? I think it's around seven years. Oh, dang. Yeah, Only one year. Only one year for me, so if anyone's the baby face here, it's me. <laughs> and so yet okay, you are fine. the tallest of us. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, it was in a time before, uh, well, before ponies, and I had some friends that were really interested in the fantasy stuff and wanted to try out. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition, because the 4th edition was supposed to be more like video games, but it ended up being one of the most disliked of the previous Dungeons and Dragons editions, because it's yeah, clunky. Because it's... Yeah. Yeah, it felt more like a pen and paper, uh, paper in an RPG, and that just didn't really translate well. No. And this, you had so few spells, and it wasn't much room for creativity to run. So I got yeah, off at the was, bad start. Yeah, it was very path oriented. Unless you pick like the right option at each level, you're not going to be doing all that great. So it's kind of weird where each class is sort of railroaded, and it's it doesn't play well. Mm. I've missed around with fourth before, and it the only good thing I've seen about 4e was its art. Like yeah. The, the piece that I use, um, this is actually from that book. Oh, okay. Hmm. But yeah, after like joining uh, my friends' games, or now I actually ran a few games for people. They're now um in actually the 40k series. I ran a game of Rogue Trader, and a game of, well, yeah, and I also ran a game of, um, something else that was also, I mean, that same vein, but it sort of went a little, um, stale quickly. Mm. But I also ran some 5e games, and... Then I really got into Pathfinder, and then things sort of blossomed out from there. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I got to try uh, 3.5, which was very much fun, even though it was very limited with what races and classes and stuff. But it was really fun because of how you could use spells. But after a while, I got to try 5th edition, and yeah, that, that was pretty much it. Even though I really like how 3.5 let you be creative with the spells and not everything is like by the book. Um, 5th edition had so much other stuff to explore and to add to it, the character and all the other races that it made up for it for my part. I 
for that type of idea there, now I'd say you probably would enjoy Pathfinder because it can add on a lot to your character because there's a lot of resources you can make use out of. But mm. there's so sort of much is a to nice. Um, it sort of is like 3.5 plus. Is what Pathfinder is. It sort of improves upon what um, 3.5 had and then adds more onto it. What did you say, MT? Oh, I was just saying that Pathfinder is so is a lot more complicated than 5e. 5e oh, is, it is pretty fun. I find 5e, 5e a lot is... friendlier to come into. Yeah, 5e is nice and streamlined. It's good as a nice icebreaker system. Uh, yeah, but it's like for my ADHD and dyslexia brain, it's like it's hard enough and you're telling me Pathfinder is even more complicated? What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, most of the complication is really uh... on the DMs end. Okay. As long as they point out which books, um, like, like, like I did for the um, for Red Hurst, you know, like I put together all the books you're now for it, and I went like, here are the books you're now. You guys can look through it you're now and see like what you liked you're now, and we can sort of go off from there. Yeah, I'm just like I've looked at uh, not Pathfinder but Pony Finder because of course ponies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I uh, haven't had a proper look at Pony Fighter, but from what I've heard, it is clunky, I think? It might be, but it also looks a lot of fun because, you know, ponies, and of course I would have loved to try being like a shum shamanic uh, zebra or something there, because, man, who's toast favorite character, Sakura? Who's toast? <laughs> nice. Yeah. What? N no influence from Trifundo? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I didn't know about Chifundo there, then. I mean, in Pathfinder, there is an actual shaman class. Yeah, and one of the elf books. Nice. Classes too. You gotta remember yeah, that. There's a lot of classes. It's, it's, it's basically you throw a rock and you might accidentally hit a three sub class. <laughs> um, yeah, either you're gonna be hitting a class or you're gonna be hitting one of the archetypes. So basically, like, archetypes are, like, things you can add on to your class for now, so it'll change some things in it. And with some of them, you can actually have, like, two or more. It just depends on what they're changing in your actual class. So it's they can sort of, like, streamline you to be, like, more better at, say, this thing, but by get, being better at this thing, you lose out on this other thing. Okay. A lot of it's, balancing. It's pretty nice. Oh, yeah, lots of balancing. That is good. So, if you're playing normal D&D, what is your favorite class to play most of the time, at least, if you're able to pinpoint <laughs> one? I am a straight-up life cleric. I like <laughs> healing people and being a support character. I love being in that niche, even though a lot of people don't. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I'm not sure because I've never played 5e before, but uh, I have been playing around with a character uh, with a character idea for a fi uh, for 5e. I just have no idea what class would fit them best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the uh, pen and paper RPG that you play the most, what is your favorite class to play in that one? So far, what I played the most has been the Dead Tree system and Path uh, Pathfinder. So. Specifically, Redhurst. Yeah, but like, what was your then? Your was sorcerer your favorite class then? Mm. That's again kind of hard to say, considering that we spent most of our time at a negative level so far. Oh haven't yeah, really given, yeah. Haven't really gotten uh, gotten much of a uh, much of a chance to get into the meat of it since we're still below level mm -hmm. one. Mm. Yeah, at this point you got, I think, half of your level 1 stuff for now, so you guys have a few bells and whistles to play with at the moment for now from each of your classes, because they're both wizards and they're also another class. So you have the arcane stuff for now that a wizard can do for now, mixed in with something else for now, like case in point with Nehru Rui's um, two characters for now. She has the triplets, and one of they are a blood rager, which is sort of a combination of um, a sorcerer and a barbarian. 
Interesting. So they are able to go into the barbarian rage and all that, but they're also able to make use out of their spells while in that rage too. They're sort of like that weird little thing there now that can actually do casty casty stuff for now when they're doing like their um rages. Okay. Yeah, it's the um hybrid um class system which is sort of a thing in Pathfinder there now, so you have like different like subsets of classes. So hybrid classes are combinations of two classes put together. So you have things say like the swashbuckler, which is a combination of I think a rogue and a fighter, and things like that. that. Sounds about right. <laughs> I know the swashbuckler appears in Five uh, E as a basically their class design is uh, challenging enemies to fight you one on one. Yeah. Yep, they're very good at dual wielding and oh, actually no, it's gunslinger and I think um fighter. Because the thing is, they operate off the same system as the gunslinger does when it comes to the panache system. So like luck and all that, like grit points, um, they both have the same thing there now. And it states in the rules for both of those classes that grit, panache, and I think so, uh, another class's special thing sort of they all add on together. So it's sort of like off the same um, idea mm -hmm. as what they run off of. Kind of that same idea of having an extra bank of points to pull from. Yep. Or whenever so in this case, now you're cool. able to basically pull all of them together now. So if say, you're, say, like a gunslinger swashbuckler, you can use both your panache and your um, grit points um, because they're all in the same quarter now for both things. Okay. So, MT. Yeah, then... Yep. Mm -hmm. Poofy? Yeah, I was saying, and then you've got the uh, spiritualist for the harpy. Yep. Because um, Jerry is. She's not a wizard, she's actually a sorceress. Because um, Jerry, as a character, um, was not smart enough to pass the initial tester now. But one of the professors at the school now picked her up because. He sort of picked up that she, she was more um, powered in the sorceress line of thought there now, so she has a very high charisma, so she's able to use um, the power of her bloodline. Okay, final sight, you're amazing, and you are a gift from heaven. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, what happened? He sent me pony stuff in five fra 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 fra. I'm 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 just gonna post this here, and I'm go I'm 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 gonna Not five A stuff. I'm gonna post it here. Oh right, I forgot about playing Shift Equestria. Because this oh yeah this is one, yeah. This, this 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 is this is amazing. I'm happy. Oh yeah. Yeah, hey, I, I forgot about that for now. Through it. Uh, next D&D, &D, I'm just going to be like, do you all know homebrew? <laughs> 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 Sitting there with my Metal Pony t-shirt and they ask why. No <laughs> particular reason. <laughs> just that I have a character I want to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually forgot about that book, but yeah, that's actually a thing you're done. Yeah, I'm just gonna save this and take care of it and love it for the rest of my life, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's zebras <sighs> and breezies. They're, yep. They had breezies? What? Yeah, I believe they got a they got a good bit of the equestrian stuff in there. They they have goats. I don't like the F They have they have Grogar! They have Grogar! I can be Grogar's angry sister. <laughs> Ooh, they have the they have the elks. Well, elks. I thought there was supposed to be deers, but yeah. Oh, Kirin. Yaks, yaks, smash. Sorry, I'm I'm happiness going brain. Wee. No worries. We already had my brief little mm -hmm. um splurges on um Pathfinder, so I think we're good now. <laughs> e happiness sacred oak holy flame hmm <laughs> hmm celestia pants <laughs> uh 
Apple to orange, cloud walking, animated rope, emotion drain, share. I like these spells. Animated rope is a nice one. I think that's across like all of the D and D games, and also in the Pathfinder. You're, you'll find that, like, like a lot of spells are sort of universal like that. Yeah, but, but they might have maybe some things tweaked or something. But it's like this stuffy is from like the series itself, and that makes me very happy because I I'm not I'm I might not be a giant lore horse, but logical lore horse that build world and makes sense. I love, and this just makes nice. me even more happy. So it's just like. Ugh ecstasy in my brain or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know i understand the feeling yeah. um yeah uh back on track uh yeah mt favorite uh, favorite uh, class <laughs> uh, okay it's gonna depend homebrew or only base game uh or only is... base game only base game because or else we will be oh. sitting here for quite a while Oh no! What? No, 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 straight up going to be artificer. No questions asked. I mean, oh. Anyone who knows. Yeah. I, 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 as previously mentioned, I like my magic items. Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> kind of obvious. <laughs> um, though from the base game, paladins are always pretty fun. Though I mean, I did actually have a bit of fun playing with a planeswalker ranger. Even though I know Rangers get a pretty bad rap in uh, 5e for not I really being don't as good as that. other classes. They're okay. I mean, sure, there are some people that do things a little bit better than now, like some of the classes do, but I always felt like the Ranger was just an underappreciated class. I also enjoyed a, playing a Sun Soul Monk because I, I used a, a homebrew race called uh, the Four Claimer. Nice. Oh. Monks are just fun to play around with. I've never personally had one myself or not, but I we had one person in the 5e game that I first ran in um, uh, one of her players or now was playing a monk and she was having the time of her life speeding around and just punching and kicking yes. things. <laughs> yes, because when I, I remember right, this there's a sprint action that lets you double your speed. I was able to basically cover nearly 200 feet in a single round. She did a lot of that, and it was funny. We also have a drinking buddy in chat. Hello! Hey, buddy. Hey. We have the drinking boots. Hi. Um, To be honest, it's still a very close call for me, because I basically play just as much of both, which is, uh, if most people know me, a bard and druid. <laughs> because, yeah. Uh, I often, I have very often wanted to try to multi-class those two because who doesn't want a, who doesn't want a chameleon playing guitar on a leaf? Because you oh, know, for to do a nice um, <laughs> to do a combined class like that, you need to have a pretty good charisma and a wisdom. So that's hmm. possible, but challenging. It would be challenging, but I can definitely sort of actually wait a sec. <laughs> I'm gonna do just... um, the alignment system there now. Um, wouldn't that come into sort of like a clashing I of f- um, interest? How in that five in five V alignment isn't really too big of a deal. No, it depends uh, on okay. how you play and the personality of the character itself. So for me, I very often end up in neutral good or uh, neutral neutral or chaotic good for some reason and I never understood chaotic good because it's supposed to say like they might steal your car and they might save your life and I'm just sitting there like why would I steal someone's car (laughs) well chaotic good is they're not bound by the laws of like things going around they play by their own code they do their own thing but it's usually in the interest of the good line so (laughs) They're not going to say like burn down the bird or now, but they might maybe run off with something or now. I think it might be uh, what might exp- fall into that explanation better is um, 
say if someone's like bleeding out and they need like someone got hurt and they need a ride to the hospital they're going to go over steal someone's car and drive that person to the hospital but yeah. then you drive well, the car back Doing... like robin hood is cat good yeah ah steal from the rich give the poor ah Oh, okay. Then I understand why I might end up in chaotic good sometimes. Yeah, like the chaotic <laughs> good ones, they usually have like a code of honor, so to speak. You know, like if you know of the character Dritz the Warden from the um, Forgotten Realms books, he's chaotic good. That's his character because he has his own line of like his own code of honor there now, but he does good things, but he is okay with doing mischief at times. But he doesn't do it um, with any malice. He's not like the other drow that are out there. Okay. We also have a question in chat from Noah021. Question for everyone. What is your favorite My Little Pony fan song? I love Discord and it will be okay. Hmm. I don't know any, so I'm going to have to... You don't know Discord? Discord, I'm howling at the moon. I know the, I know the character <laughs> Discord. I'm, I'm, they're talking about fan songs. I don't know haven't, any fan songs. Haven't you heard Discord? I'm howling at the moon, sleeping in the middle of a summer afternoon. Well, it depends. Uh, There's the Eurobeat one. Uh, I think it was called Eurobeat Pony. I can't remember the name of it. I, I don't know who made it. I just know I know the song and I can recognize it when they're playing it. And it's like very uh, tough beat. And it's fun to both dance to and sing to, even if you can't sing. Because, you know, everybody has mm. that one time where you're just singing your heart out no matter how it sounds. <laughs> uh. Because, uh, because there's two. Because Eurobeat Brony did one. And then, uh, and then the Living Tombstone remixed it into the one that everyone knows. Then that's the one I know. <laughs> well, my the tumbleweed book. gif is appropriate for here because I don't <laughs> know any of those. Uh, uh, Phil, can you please explain to me why you are just typing in random ponies' name in chat? I'm getting a bit confused there. Um... What other? F well, we have the Wasteland Whalers. We also have the music from Fallout from Fallout Across the Dead Tree. I think you know that music, uh, Orsk. Uh, you've heard of them now, but I can't remember names um, for life of me. No, but do you remember if there are any one of them you like? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> or you just like, but not. Uh... Yeah, I don't have a definite one, yeah. Ah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, any one of you guys have a favorite Phantom song? I have, I have been around, gosh, there's there's a lot of them. Wasteland Whalers does some really good stuff. Mm. Uh, I see one that's kind of a bit of an older pick would actually be uh, Swing Toddy Swing, if you give me a moment, I can find the artist for that one. Yeah. There are also a lot of other cool artists, like Forever Free Brownie, uh, oh, Music yeah. Brownie, and you have Prince Whatever, because I can never pronounce yeah. that correct. I'm sorry, Prince. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I'm sure. I, I know Sin I know Cinder really likes Forever Free Brownie. And the funny thing is, is I've listened to a ton of his songs and then I kind of paused and went, wait a minute, I know all of these. Oh, that's how he did those. Because mm. <laughs> so sure. for me, I can recognize a song, but sometimes I can't pin the individual who sung it on there. Yeah, it's, it can be a challenge, but you also have the singer like I Am Shadow 007. Thank you very much. And you have like MC Arch who does a lot of rap, actually. Um... Also, James Kelly, of course. We always got to give James <laughs> Kelly some nice credit. Excuse you. Talk. Do you talk about our Lord and Savior, James Kelly? Yes, I do speak of the <laughs> yes all hail glorious Lord. Um, actually, my favorite is Patrick Poe. He made a lot of music earlier, but uh, he hasn't made anything in the recent years, which is making me sad because because he makes a lot of awesome stuff and I wish he made more. So I can post his link there because 
he makes a lot of, uh, my favorite of course is uh, practice with Sakura uh, epic Celtic music hey there are a lot of other fun as so is wheel oh yeah poofy tell tell him about yours that one is very good mm. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot. Most of them I don't remember by name, but this is one that stuck with me. Lullaby for a princess. Yeah. Oh, okay. I knew that one, so yeah, I would probably agree with you on that one. <laughs> da, da, da! Sorry. <laughs> I had to. No. Uh, also, vocal score pony is also one, as far as I remember, that has uh, made some original music and stuff. I know there's a lot of brony musicians, but um, a lot of them happens to make like techno or mostly only computer music and not always with real instruments, which kind of makes it hard for people who are not into that type of music to recognize them or find their music somewhere. What is? What are your guys' uh, thoughts on that? On what exactly? Sorry. Um, as far as I have experienced, from the little that I know of brownie music, a lot of it that I have found is mostly like techno-ish or only a lot of... Yeah, very high energy. There aren't really kind of those slower ones. I can agree. Um, I actually keep up with uh, Ponies at Dawn where they do a lot of compilations of a lot of music around the fandom and a lot of it is... Uh, a lot of it is very techno and kind of very fast beat. Mm. Um, actually, I just, I'm, I'm now sitting here remembering all of these songs that I've remember uh hang on there's two get the phone because i know that there's a couple of more recent ones okay i mean okay this one was 10 months ago <laughs> and this one was five months ago mm -hmm. but um the these two are also two the they're they're like they're a bit more, i think they're described as electro swing and electro Ooh. swing is pretty fun yeah that's nice they both have a very kind of like kind of a very bumpy kind of feel to it oh it's yeah just, that sounds fun. Send me that in the Discord, uh, Stuffy Wuffy. I need some boogie woogie music. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I just sent it to you. That's also a thing. If I ever get to a con with you guys, we we need to find like a giant dance floor where everybody can go on and just everybody dance <laughs> awkwardly because nobody can dance, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's safe in a group because nobody can dance, then everybody can dance. Yay. Well, if you can dance, then of course have fun. But it's like, you know, if you can't dance and you uh, dance in a group, it's okay. Okay, now this has gotten the um, the men without hats song I'm playing in my head. The... We can dance if we want to. Be... Yeah, that's... Oh, I don't believe it's called dance. safety dance. Yep. Uh, I don't think song. I've I don't think I've heard that one. Can you send Ooh. it to me? Then I will take a listen to it uh, afterwards. Yeah, Wasteland Whalers also make a lot of fun, um, for a lot of Questria music. I don't know if they make anything else, but uh, also a very good song that I like from the um, uh, from Overmare Studios, the video game that they are trying to make. They have a song yes. in there called uh, Zebra Town. I know it's maybe a bit shady type of song but i really like the guy singing it and how they make uh, it feel of the music yeah uh with haymaker ah it is him okay yeah, yeah. uh zebra town is certainly a good op a good one i also forgot about a whole lot of magic that one's a nice one too and mm. i know fly like you is one of the more iconic ones from yeah them. that's the i don't remember her name but she is really really good at what she does that she is <laughs> Brittany Church. Yeah, there you go. Right. Okay. Now I'm sitting here. I'm scrolling through everything. <laughs> going, oh, I remember that. And that one. Yeah. Uh, like after all of this, it's like you kind of want to sit down and like, okay, I need to know notes. I need to know how to write a song. I need to know how to make music because I want to make something too. 
I mean, I know you've helped with writing a few songs. <laughs> I'm trying, <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty. I like I'm. I'm used to writing poems, not songs. So it's uh, it's a bit different. I mean, it's probably a bit more different than uh, being used to helping write uh, stories as opposed to uh, poems to songs. Yeah, um... it's a bit of a jump between writing to correct uh help proof stories compared to songs yeah that is that is true because they're like the few things i managed to learn this short time after fiora just like hey um you wanna can you help me write up no i i'm gonna find exactly what she said because i don't want to claim anything else oh stuffy happened thank you fraser so much for hosting let me see where... Because I was, like, out of the blue. I was just like, what? Huh? What? Huh? <laughs> I didn't, like, I didn't... Uh, I didn't see it coming, so I was a bit confused. Or uh, taken by surprise. Uh, let me show. Let's me show. Where is it? There it is. So she texted me, and just like, I, um... Uh, know you know how to do offbeat song better than me. Do you want to help me write one? I was just like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that was how that started. And uh, how many days was that ago? Ah, oh, it was actually the beginning of this month. So I had two weeks to learn from, or almost two weeks, trying to learn, you know, uh, writing rules and like do you have two different cores or do you have just one course how you have the bridge how you had starting and all those fancy fancy stuffy woofies it's uh, it's a fun challenge and it's also like with poems you can usually you don't need to have a beat you just need to know which type of poem you're doing but when you write something without a melody it's like you're sitting there and just like, ah! <laughs> but also it, it makes a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm not doing much, but I'm just like Fiora say. I'm, I'm just making sure it doesn't go dark. I guess. <laughs> just making sure it stays kind of more upbeat and happy, as opposed to, I guess the best example would be pulling a friendship as witchcraft. Yeah, I think I heard that one. Is that the one where Pinkie Pie is suddenly a gypsy and has a big pot? Yes, that's basically, I think the running joke for that is Pinkie Pie sings these kind of more... Okay, so the song, I think the instrumental is kind of more upbeat and everything, but the lyrics kind of have a bit more of a gray tone. Ah. And I think... <laughs> I think Fee's wanting you to help to keep from getting into where the the music gets a little dark. She wants to kind of keep everything absolutely upbeat because, I mean, you got to have something to kind of counter what's going on in the chapters right now. Yeah. Also, also it's, it's got to be fun songs to sing along. Yeah, that's that's one thing I want to make sure because I noticed on most songs, uh, except for of course the intro song for Fall Out of Crestia Dead Tree that most of the songs that are not like reduns of old songs can be hard to sing. So you would need simpler texts that are easy to catch on, easy to remember, and swings swings well off the tongue. So Yeah, because uh, the main theme is not too bad. The, the main theme for Dead Tree isn't too bad to sing, though I'd say that Dog Team Future is yeah, a it's hard. bit tricky. Yeah. I have the lyrics phone and it's still hard yeah it's uh it's well it is meant to be kind of a sad song as far as i remember so that's yeah. that's why i also was hoping we would have something more upbeat before fiora contacted me because like i want to have something from work that i can just blast on my phone or blast on my headset <laughs> that I can like do workout for or if I ever go to pick up friends from a party then I can just blast it on my car and they can be like of course they would be drunk because I'm picking them up and they would be like oh cool what's that and I'm just like that's from work do you guys want to know where it comes from so yeah you know commercial <laughs> he 
Yeah. Yes, I am a sneaky little pony. Wow. No, that's entirely fair. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. It would be nice because uh, I do also have a few people that are very interested, but they are young, so... I can't exactly just like, hey, read the book where it's a lot of scary stuff in. So it's nice to show them something a little more kid friendly before they get old enough to read the book itself. So that's why Upbeat Song would also be nice. Because, you know, kids like melody, even if they don't understand the words. <laughs> no, just me. Sorry. I mean, you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would have been fun if we could have, like, uh, when when we get to a con, we can also ask the DJ, hey, can you put on this song? <laughs> because it would be fun to dance to when it's all done. And, I don't know, we can celebrate. Like, I think MT, you at least have something to do with, like, the preparations. I remember you did, like, the radio calls before the uh -huh. RPG started. Yeah, I actually did the uh, the recaps for those games, and actually, I should try to get back into it. Yeah, the, the the tricky part was is uh, the games that I was in for the Chicago game. They were running, they run at the exact same time as the Dead Tree stream, so it was really tricky to stay up to date on those and still do the uh, the announcements. Yeah. Uh, also, Poofy, you're an extra in the audiobook mm -hmm. uh or do i remember wrong and you had something to do with the wednesday game or was it only the D, &D tuesday game uh, never did anything with the um with the wednesday night game and i sort of got involved right at the end and have the only war campaign and i i was on the list you now for the Star Wars one now, but sort of just pulled my name off that list. Okay. So yeah, just the um the choose it knife one. Okie dokie. Hmm. So you never had interest for the Wednesday game? Uh one thing that um was a big point for that one now Everyone that sort of has to that in on the gainer has, has to go off and buy the books. I don't have disposable income for that. Uh, as far as I know, you only need the uh, you only need the uh, uh, main book, main source book. Yeah, the Wasteland Survival Guide. That was uh, actually the cheapest one of the lot, if I remember right. Yeah, and if I also remember correctly, I have. Is it this one or is it the other one? I don't remember which one it is, but um, I have, uh, when I bought the books, I got three downloads and I have one download left. So I'm just going to, uh, ha happy birthday, Orsk. <laughs> have our free, have our free stuffy. <laughs> Where's the other one? There we go. So that's the last download. So... I can delete those after you have downloaded. Oh, please, drinking buddy. You have played the song at your work. Yes, he even yeah. has a YouTube video about it. Yeah, he no, that, that's where he posted the evidence. Mm -hmm. So, no MPC playing innocent. WIP? I think so. Uh, it's supposed to be a PDF, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's the... Best jury, but it looks a bit now for the Equestria games. Yeah, there's one that one and the main book. Unless I posted the same twice. No, it's different ones. Uh, this should be one of each. Yeah, well, it's cool. Um, you're welcome. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Going to Norwegian here. Wait. There you go. 
Um, so outside of pen and paper, are you guys having any other hobbies? Yeah, if I can ever, ever uh, actually find, uh, find, uh, find the, uh, actually re remember to do so and, and ba basically issues with procrastination. Procrastination. Uh, High five. Get, Sorry. Get back, get back into in, into my writing because there are two stories I've been I've been trying to work on, but kind of stalled a little bit because uh, procrastination and current events kind of make it hard to uh, find uh, find that fi a fire to get uh, get behind the keyboard. Same with my two. It's been a long while since I touched those. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make a uh, Fallout Equestria story and a uh, MLP Destiny crossover story. Oh. Sweet. Fancy. So, if okay, I ask, what inspired you to do that in the first place? Fallout Equestria one? Yeah. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. Dead Tree. <laughs> ah, fair. Yep. Yeah. Do, uh, do, uh, doing my, uh, I've got a few f uh, fun things planned out and hoping to do the whole Fallout Equestria thing justice with some of the twists and turns I've got. And at the same time have to ask myself, oh, a sweet and merciful lord, what is wrong with me? How did I come up with some of these things that are so dark and so twisted? I do not want to, I do not want to say any of them on stream because this is a Chris stream. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, that's fair. Now hug. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep it safe for Chris. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Maybe on another stream. <laughs> Yeah, and as for the Destiny one, also inspired by Fallout Equestria, because a, a universe that I have a, that I have a great amount of joy for, I enjoy the lore of, is the world of Destiny, and I w kind of want to make a little sto a little story that that's similar to Fallout Equestria. It does the same thing for Destiny. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Gonna t uh, take some ponies, uh, ponies, and turn them into guardians. Da da da. Hmm. Interesting. Looking forward to see how that's gonna go. Mm -hmm. Orsk, you said also something about writing. Yeah, I played my hand with a little bit of writing before there. Nothing I j I published or anything or put out, but dabbling's more like. So, anything you want to talk about? Uh, they're sort of inspired and in a little set in the Ruby universe. Ah, the the girls uh, with the different weapons and stuff. Yep. I don't know much about the universe. I only know there's a blonde girl that kind of looks like Applejack that has a mechanic arm and a girl running around in black and red and a giant uh, cider. Cider? Cider. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. them. They're both sisters. That The first one was Yang and the second one's Ruby. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the first big thing about weapons, uh, weapons in there. It's also a gun. <laughs> Everything is also, also a gun. A gun. <laughs> And I'm just... Very rarely do you have... Oh, go ahead. No, sorry. It's just like... um, The implications of everything being both a gun and something else that you use to smash people with, it's like, I'm getting concerned. You're going to ruin the gun. <laughs> yeah. There are very rare instances where it's only like a sword or something. There's, like I said, those are very rare instances. <laughs> yeah. And that sword, it becomes a bigger sword. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yes, it does in later series. It's like, when when did items start to evolve? <laughs> well, I mean, you upgrade them over time. Now, especially when you get um, 
buddy buddy with a very um smart dumb scientist guy that goes like i'm just gonna upgrade all your stuff and you know what i'm also gonna add in some nice little like doohickeys and the like <laughs> yeah i'm gonna add a laser <laughs> Ugh. oh i mean uh jean like said he only had a sword and a shield so his shield sort of can get Bolt I mean, can get attached to the sword and to make it bigger. The shield has this whole like energy field added on to it, or now and a bunch of other things. You know, like there's a lot of like little like double seven um, gadgets they get. Oh, yeah, that's that's one of the most uh, one of the fun things about that world. That sword's a gun. That bow is a gun. That shield's a gun. That gun is also <laughs> a gun. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> what about you, MT? Have you dabbled into the writing area corner? Actually, I, I did as well. I'm basically <laughs> just because uh, me and Snips were doing some extra talking and everything on background lore and so I started writing some stuff out and then it just kind of got of a case of the campaign that all that was based in kind of just got on pause and, and I hadn't really touched it since okay. plus also school gets busy yeah I remember school <laughs> yeah uh, Hitty, you're not wrong I think Chris would enjoy seasons volumes one through three of Ruby the later ones, though, they do get dark. Mm. Is there any place you can watch it? Yep, uh, Rooster Teeth, the company that makes it. Um, you can watch it all for free on their site. All, oh. um, all volumes of it. Ah, uh, hit me up with a link. Sure. Maybe. <laughs> I could try to do a live live review <laughs> after I watched all the episodes. <laughs> Uh, like I said, China. after like even there's sections of the of like say volume three that get pretty dark and you know, like especially yeah. at the towards the end of it. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, just have like a box of like tissues with it because it it hits the feels real hard at times. Yeah. Ah. Also, I've even only... I've teared up a few times. I've basically only watched through the fourth volume. So Ooh, yeah, it's it. The story keeps getting. They they keep adding on to the story, and it's nice like that. But it gets dark, especially in the last two volumes. Hmm. So, a pro one potential proposal, if Chris is going to be watching Ruby, why not get a whole bunch of us together for a watch uh, party? So, when she eventually. Gets so when she eventually gets to uh, volume three, she'll uh, she'll have company. Hey. Ooh, they also put out um, a few. Um, I think they did it for like the, the early vo um, volumes. They put together like all of the like episodes into like one big old like movie to watch, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one... sort of like what they did with um, Red versus Blue back in the day. Uh huh. Like um, this is like a this is like a this is like a TV show type setup where there's like multiple episodes, but um, in the last like year or two, they put together like all of the episodes in like one big old video to watch. So you like each volume has its own like video essentially, like its own movie to watch to see the entire thing of it. Ah, oh, cool. Uh, so I... you could like sit down and and watch all of volume one as like one big old video. Nice. That that I kind of like I that like because then you don't have don't have to switch videos all the time and you don't have to rewatch stuff. So that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's in a different section here, but I'll give you basically like the link to the Ruby Wonder now, and mm. I'll give you a link to the little like kind of like collection of the like all the volumes and like their own little like videos thing. Thank you. And and might I suggest for a little uh, palate cleanser, Ruby Chibi. Aww. Oh, Chibi's nice. Yeah, uh, I also see it's John... It's like fun turkey antics. Um, uh, John Cook. You're not a day? 
I look at the that I, uh, I if if it is this person that I think it is, it's a Norwegian brownie in chat, uh, the John Croc. Uh, he says, my dagger and my sword and my bow and my gun and my crossbow and my warhammer and my great sword and my broomstick. And I'm just like, oh, hmm. I forgot. <laughs> they actually put their their own little grim campaign. They yeah. have like their own little like tabletop system that's set in the universe and they've been having some of the people on them in the company play it so yeah no, uh, that's also a thing the thing is uh the thing he uh typed out in chat was actually an inside joke <laughs> uh ah. because he is my uh, one of he is the dm of the dnd campaign i'm currently in where i try to go very outside my comfort zone where i played a cleric Ooh. of death <laughs> Well, uh, technically, I was a cleric. Wait, what? I uh, technically I was a cleric. <laughs> technically, I was a cleric of life, but she was uh, worshiping the god of death because he could take life and he could spare life. But the thing is, this lady is a little uh... bit cuckoo, so she, of course, when given the opportunity to choose between like a, a very powerful weapon or a flying broomstick, she, of course, goes with the broomstick. <laughs> So she can fly, <laughs> yay! <laughs> oh, and she's so crazy, but she's so much fun. But at the same time, it's challenging because I can be my natural self and just go around and be helpful. She is like the crazy one who like I want a parrot, I want a cat, I want a bear, I want. She's like she's basically a Pokemon trainer with broomstick. <laughs> okay, oh. the four um, linkster now. Thank you. So the first one is 2D series as a whole. There's a little like drop down menu that allows you to go between the different volumes. So it's currently on eight at the moment. So you'd have to go down to um like um to one in order to watch it from the start. But I also the second link is for the complete series. So each volume in its own separate movie um length um video essentially. Okay. Thank you. There are oh they've actually done it all the way up to volume five so yeah you could actually sit there and watch all of it um, in four separate videos so volume one by itself volume two and then volume three is um, split up into two parts because they got them longer with the episodes over time so they had to um, split that one up. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm just getting a bit distracted with John because he insists still that my character was trying to eat a live bird. But no, she's uh, the character said she could order whatever she want and she said the flying fogel, which was a flying bird. But she didn't want to eat the bird. She wanted to have the bird as a pet because, like I said, she wanted pets. Uh, but the DM still thinks that she wanted to... Uh, eat it but she had the broom and the bird flew away so she of course gets on the middle of the table and jumps up on her broom and starts following the bird Whee! so she makes a total mess yes <laughs> <laughs> and I really I really uh, like uh, hmm? oh uh just continue I'll just add it um what I had said at the end yeah uh, basically Rotvik said cleric of death begins to cast a spell ooh sparkles <laughs> yeah that happens <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we should stream those RPGs. Had had John. See what people say. <laughs> but yeah, the third link is for the Ruby Chibi series, which is just cute, adorable, just like concentrated like shots of um of just happiness. Which, judging by what you're say, uh, saying, are very much needed. Yeah, for the later volumes, they get dirt because, yeah. The thing is, when you're fighting a force of evil, evil tends to do nasty things. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the fourth link is to the World of Remnant videos. These are, like, little blurbs of extra information, like, um, further information on, like, certain topics and the like to know within the, um, the World of Remnant, because Remnant is the name of the planet that they're on. So World of Remnant episodes give you more um, information on the setting uh, for different things. They did a nice few of those over the volumes. And Final Sight has blessed me with another of his fan works. 
because if you have seen one of my earlier streams, he has a lot of fun making sponsors for my pony. Let's see, where did you go? Nice. Yeah, uh, it basically has its own map on my computer, which is called Weird Fan Art. <laughs> and today's uh, sponsor is apparently d and I am sponsored by D&D this week. <laughs> You can see it on the screen if you're watching the chat. If not, I can always just send it in the stuffy. Oh, um, Hedy, um, they've removed them from YouTube because in the later volumes, um, some blood was being shown right now, so it's to avoid YouTube's whole, like, ban hammer stuff. It's all on the, um, the site now, but the thing is, Anyone can access the uh, Ruby stuff here now for free on the site. Yay! Yeah. Awesome. So I will take a look at that. Yeah, uh, Eddie, I think they just took it down just, just to cover their bases. Yeah, better safe than sorry when they it comes to YouTube. To that too, but they're also just trying to have people just make use of the site instead of third-party sites, so makes sense from a business standpoint. Yeah. But yeah, I think there might have maybe been a falling out between the company and YouTube or something, so they probably just went, yeah, we're just cutting all ties. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I gotta... So to be fair, YouTube these days is weird. Yeah, YouTube is weird. And did you hear about uh, Twitter is gonna be something you have to pay for? Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There was a rumor going about that, but it's w at least at the, same, at the same time, I think, one of those things where it's one of those internet rumors where I don't give, give it that much credit because... You know, internet fear mongering and all that. Yeah, but it's like you would have to pay to have an account, and there would be like super tweets and uh, blocking of ads and something because, like, where are the ads? The one I maybe see once in an hour that are in between my other tweets. Yeah, so I think. Like, yeah, they are also on Netflix too. Yeah, I think people on Twitter would riot if they did that. Yeah, like, Twitter is nice for communication and networking and see what your friends are up to and see cute animals. But it's not something I'm going to pay for. Yep. <laughs> then, um, I don't know, I think I would jump over to Vimo or something, other communication, or go back to Facebook, I don't know. <laughs> well, worst case scenario, you can always find adorable um, pictures of animals, like on, say, like Pinterest or something. Yeah, that's true. But now I was more thinking like for work work stuff because Twitter is very useful for voice actors when it comes to casting calls and stuff. Ooh, true. Mm. So, you know. Ooh, that's a good point, fun site. Yeah, they might maybe make some type of premium service. Hmm. So, what, like a that double, might be... uh, double the character count for Twitter? For premium tweets? Ooh. Or you can edit hey, them. Buddy. You can edit them if you type too. wrong. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need it. I need it. You have no idea how often I type wrong. And then I don't see it before after I push the send button. Oh, oh, oh. That makes a good point. Sort of like this quirk nitro. Uh, yeah, make it. Add on a premium service, not just to force everyone to pay for it. So that actually makes more sense. Ah, uh, what for me, Why, me? And yeah, I agree with John. Pay for Twitter. I don't want to pay to post random D and D thoughts and other junk. I would like to get paid to do that, though. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Let's let's get paid for our randomness. I mean that's basically video game journalism right there. Yeah, hashtag Markiplier. Well, he does a lot of other stuff as well, so he deserves credit because he does a lot of work. I, I 
wouldn't exactly call Markiplier a video game journalist. He's just a YouTube personality. Yeah, true. Yeah, I was thinking like those paid ones that you know that can like barely play any games, you know, but they apparently affect all of like the um, ratings and the like of like video games and like you know it's weird. Hmm. Yeah, it it's kind of does seem kind of strange how you can claim to be a video game journalist if you've never played a video game. <laughs> I mean, some of these ones they can barely do anything, and then they go on and they say like this game's horrible, but it's just no, you just don't know how to play it. You didn't follow the instructions. It it told you to do that thing, but you went off to go do the other thing, you mabubber. But yeah. Yeah. Like, I've seen a few of them like try things out, and it's. I haven't seen a good one out of any of them. It's weird, and yet these are the ones that get like paid money. They're now and like they're now to look at games. They're now they get early copies and all this stuff. Are now, but they cannot do anything with it. It's, it's silly. Hmm. What do you think about all but, of this oh, MT? Well. Um, I would say the whole premium service thing. I would say keep the same base experience, but then maybe say add a little bit more. Because, I mean, the thing is, the service works just as fine as is. To be fair, John, some of them can't even finish the tutorials on the games they try. Oh, like the guy oh. that, like the like the ones that got stuck on the Cuphead tutorial for like yes, hours I mean, because, they ha because they couldn't because they couldn't do anything. Yeah, there you go, Final Sight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's. It's weird that there's so much power that these people have, but they don't know anything about the field, of, like, their industry that they're in, other than just, like, they know a lot of people. It's weird. But that's the way of things, and, uh, and that's probably not going to change anytime soon. Hmm. It's going to be interesting to see what's happened in the next 10, 20 years since technology has like. <laughs> it's going to be interesting yeah, to see what comes sort out. Of, um, yeah, we've jumped ahead on a fair few compared to like, I don't know, like half a century ago to now. Things were way um, simpler, technologically speaking. Hmm. I mean, Pete's sakes, within the last two decades. There's been a drastic um, difference in um, the levels of technology. Healthcare and how to do stuff, how to not do stuff. It's just, okay, I know well, this... we haven't had our hoverboards, but, um, you know, we have well, other stuff. Thing when it comes to actual medical, te medical technology, yeah, all of the bells and whistles that they use in the actual like rooms and the like are still the same, but they're still using the same outdated OS or now for like patient files and like and then people keep ripping into them and like stealing stuff and information like that because they have not updated their actual software of yeah. like their database and all that stuff and that's scary. Yeah, and the nasty food you get at hospitals, like shouldn't the food be something that you really should focus on because you go to the hospital to hospital to get healthy <laughs> you shouldn't have like garbage Sadly, food that doesn't give you nourishment or taste decent at least I'm so not pissed. all hospitals are sort of there to help you get out of it some of them like the one near me it's basically where people go to die ah. and it it's really bad it's Ooh. it's downright horrible to be honest hmm but at the same time, how well, much money does the government give to hospitals as well to keep up? Like, even here in Norway, we have some hospitals and older homes where they can't afford enough supplies. So the people working there have to pay out of their own pocket to get band-aids or uh, sh uh, like uh, shots, 
equipment and stuff like that, and it's horrible. It's that's not right. But yeah, yeah, like down in the state now, like there's been a f- more than a few hospitals that have been um, hit by hackers and basically locked out of everything. They're now and like forced to pay a huge amount of money to bear there now for them to free up their um, their computers and like and It's just the physical technology has out has outpaced what our own like infrastructure and software can handle. And there's people that are just make taking advantage of it, and it's it's not good. It's not going to be pretty, and in another decade, it's going to be even worse. Yeah. Because I doubt if they haven't changed things there now for things like that, it's not going to be changed in another decade. It, the gap is just going to increase. Hmm. And that scares me. Yeah really hope something goes for the better for the hospitals because especially now with Corona Pona that we need them more Oof. than ever indeed but hackers are still doing their thing and as long as like I said the infrastructure like the actual like databases that they're using their basic software is not getting updated it's gonna continue to be attacked and taken advantage of and it's not going to change. Hmm. Then again, that's just a nihilist to me talking. To be honest, I think there's possible that it will be changed, but it's going to go slow. Which The thing is, they'd have to invest the money into actually updating that. And the thing is, it will just take one company or one person to go like, you know what, we should change this, but... We just need that one person to do it. It's just sort of just, uh, it might happen, it might not. Who knows? Let's hope for the best, at least. That's all we can do. Um, since I don't know if you can do something by vo- voting even more. I don't know how you do it in America, uh, Canada. Uh, I mean, in Canada now, you got um, the three different parties for now, and some smaller ones. But yeah, it's it's almost as bad as down in the states now when it comes to the whole political thing. There, like things are just weird, and the politicians they're looking out for themselves. They're mm. not exactly worried too much of the little guy there now that votes them in. It's just people just continuing to be people. Well, it's just going to take a lot of people to choose to actually do the right thing and change things for the better. But the thing is, those good people have to sort of come together to sort of negate the bad that's out there. And that's not being, not going to be an easy thing to do. But it's still possible, so that's what we're going to focus on. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, Final Slide, that's bad. 2003 software slip. In server software. Oh. Yeah, that's what I mean. They use outdated software now because it's what they're used to, and it's not good because there's a whole lot of risks in using the old software like that. There's known faults into it. There's things that anyone with a grain of sense can take advantage of, and they do. And it's not even just the medical field. It's other businesses in the like now, like... There's a lot of things that are still using, like, 2003, 2004, like, maybe even before 2000 software there now that's... And then in positions of, you'd be surprised that they're still using that, and, like, big businesses and, like, you're now still using outdated database software because it's cheap. It works. Why improve on it? Mm. They should, but... No one is willing to foot the bill to do it. And that's the thing. That kind of thing requires people to actually invest the money in and the time to actually make it better instead of going with the... with just the norm at this point in time. So, let's change the subject to something more happy. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. 
So, uh, I, I hope this is happy. Uh, you guys have seen the Generation 5 leaks, I presume? Yep. Empty? Horse? Yes. Nope. Oh, you yeah, have here's no? a distraction recovery. Okay, uh, focus. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Why? laughs> yes. Um, well, is it okay that we talk about it, uh, Orsk? Uh, up to you. I'm okay with it. I'm just not going to have much to add on, on this topic. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I see final sight yeah. already. All hail the tennis ball queen. Wait, uh, what? Yes, exactly. You need to see this, sweetie. <laughs> uh, G5 Tennis. Ball, Tennis. Exactly. So, sweetie, just um, hold on. <laughs> uh, uh, MT, you're good at finding stuff. Help me. Hey, I'm check this video real quick. Is this gonna be like um, the little baby um, alicorn levels of why? Uh, not exactly. It's okay. something that, like, it has potential. I think at least, as long as you don't see out the bed sheet, that was horrible. Blech. You don't, you don't watch the bed sheet. The bed sheet is not. Or this might give you a rough idea for in about 41 seconds. Yay! There it is! Ah. <laughs> Copy link. Yeah, uh, the model looks odd. Yeah, it does. It's uh, mostly because of the ice eye uh, uh, stuffy. I presume. Not even that. The face structure itself is weird. It doesn't look <laughs> right. Ah, I saw bro. I saw Brogar's art of her ah. in the video. But yeah, what I think is really interesting in the photo is that you see the their guards are pegasi. I think at least the blue one is a pegasi as well, since they also have the wings in the back uh, of the gladiatorium or the room that they're in. I don't see an um, image of any wings on the blue one now, but. I can definitely see it on the green one, though. Yeah. Uh, you also see in the background that they have wings in gold on the wall. So, for me, uh, it is a good chance to guess that maybe instead of the unicorns, it's actually the pegasi in this generation that are, like, the fancy ones. Which would be an interesting twist. What do you guys think about that? Okay, MT is be right back. Yeah, I just got back. Okay. Uh, where is the server? Doo, doo, doo. So, have they said why she has a tennis ball on her? They haven't said form. anything. But it is no. uh, easy to guess that since they are apparently in front of somebody very important, since they have guards on each side of them, I would guess they are in front of a queen or a princess. And since she's a unicorn, and in this generation they are supposed to be not trusting each other as they did in uh, generation 4. So unicorn, pegasi and earth pony are not as com uh, friends or combined as they were in the earlier seasons. Uh, generations so being skeptical of the unicorn and they have a spiky thing in the head you put a safety pin on it so you know baseball like you know, like you do with goats yeah duke do you want the ball the body itself okay it looks okay-ish but the face the face just has that uh, weird feeling to it, it doesn't look right. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm skeptical of this. Ah, it's fair. It's fair. So, you know, the fandom are going a bit crazy about this. So we are looking forward to see what's going to come out. Either it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. Oh, yes, that uh, that wild headcanon, that saying G5 is just a kid's version of Fallout Equestria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, you're not wrong about the synopsis of it. Mm. So that can be interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you have the animated photo as well. Um, what I also want to say is that I have been a Generation 1 fan. So I have seen Generation 1, which was good. Generation 2 was like, somebody liked it, somebody did not. And Generation 3, we do not talk about that because that doesn't exist. And then we have Generation 4. weird one? Yeah, it's the one we don't talk yeah. about. <laughs> what, what, are you what are you talking about? They just skipped from two to four. I yes. don't know why they did that. But... Yes, exactly. Eh. Mm, yeah, mm, <laughs> totally agree. Mm, yep, mm, mm, yep, yep, yep. Sort of sounds like d and <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, um, where was I? Yeah, so you had that and then you had the good one, Generation 4. So my little childhood is saying like yeah if this doesn't go well then i'm predicting a pattern that is going to be good bad bad good bad bad good so we will have two bad generations before we get something good again but hopefully i will be wrong i could i think I could, one thing i kind of like though is how they had a got a fandom artist to work on helping to design these characters yeah oh i gotta find her i did follow her on twitter let me see uh, I am a Lou, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I just want to find her Twitter so I can post it so people can follow her. Let's see. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. Uh, where are you? Yoo There you are. A M A. Yeah. Um. I am yeah. Alu. I am Alu. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Pony Life, that would technically be 4.5. Kind of like yeah. how... Yeah, three, sadly. How the unnamed one was bad, and the sort of middle unnamed one was... Oh! Like, we have one... We have Generation 1, we have Generation 1.5, we have Generation 2, Generation that does not exist, and we have Generation 4, Generation 4.5. So now we're getting Generation 5. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know. There's hope. There's hope. There's mm -hmm. hope. Because in case then we get the one that is decent, but not necessarily as good as the others. So there's uh -huh. hope, there's hope. And I also posted the lucky and amazing lady uh, Twitter in chat so you guys can go follow her and get all the Snoopy Snoop. Also, if you make fan art or something of the characters, I have seen that she reacted very, very happy about it. So, you know, fan art, uh, plushies, all the other type of amazing stuff oh. that this fandom has made. I, I can't I can't bl I blame them. She spent how many years working on designing them, and once they finally got released, everyone's just taken to them just like that. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I'd say she's earned it. Yeah. Yeah, like it's just it's really awesome. It's the fact that they got one of like a fandom artist of the fandom to come in and help with the designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh. that is just incredible. Yeah, that's like the fan fandom dream come true. <laughs> oh my gosh. I also see that we have five minutes left of this stream. So is there anything else you like? Would, you guys would like to take up or any questions in chat? Then the time to ask is now. Meow. You know? Meow, meow. 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 Meow.
<laughs> so enthusiastic. We're just making God noises for the last five minutes now, are we? Bark, bark, biff. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, bark, bark. Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can anybody else make animal noises? Well. Uh. <laughs> Hawk. Hawk. <laughs> Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Me. Me. <laughs> uh, and then we have the prize winner, Vinsk. <laughs> uh, Norwegian, Norwegian wo uh, voice, Norwegian sound uh, description of the horse noise, Vinsk. Oh my gosh. Uh, Baylor? Baylor? The Baylor. It's your boy, the pie. Jasper pie? No, definitely not Jasper pie. Uh, that, if that was him, that would be JT to the max. Ah. I'm very bad with names. So, uh, sorry about that if I can't remember you. I'm sorry. I'm bad with names. The other one? Other pie? Pinkie pie? Final site just posted in my DM. Zebra sounds and barking. <laughs> oh, adorable. <laughs> oh, it's Big Apple Pie! Hi! Funny you can make it! Hi! Sorry I didn't recognize the Twitter name. Oh my gosh. Awesome. I'm just gonna do this. Yes. Big Apple Pie is an amazing voice actor. He can do... Like, I do not kid you, like, the best Discord uh, impression I have ever heard in my life. Except for Ooh. Delancey his, himself. Like, I kid you not. It's like, okay, did you kidnap John Delancey and have, have him just take in his sound box or something? I don't know. He is... No, I'm not gonna yeah, stop, because you know it's true. Me. Yeah, I need to get you in one of these uh, chill and chats uh, one day, so just to show you off, because you deserve it. He has also tried oh, to, just... yeah. Uh, one thing I also one want to brag. Three favorite characters. Yeah, he is pretty awesome. The thing is, uh, Big Apple Pie has also tried to write for a lot of Questria, but without the unnecessary uh, sexual or like gore type of stuff, but still make it as scary and legit as it is. Which I think is very interesting because that would have been a real challenge. But at the same time, that's something I think would be good for people to see. So I really wish him the best of luck with that. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a really big pro challenge. Because, yeah, one of the big thing things that, oh. that can, it makes just the wasteland so horrid is things like raiders, slavers, and things like that. Mm. But uh, didn't you still continue to write the story itself, even though the animation got cancelled? Um, I'm asking, asking him. Because it would still be something that would be interesting to read. As you can see by my fellow chillin' chatters. Chillin' chatters? <laughs> oh... But yeah. <laughs> hmm. Slice of life story about raiders. <laughs> uh. Hey, Asura Lockhart. Thank you so much for dropping by. So, we have hit the Best two hour mark. We have hit the two hour mark. Uh, this is normally where I would end the stream, but I am wondering. Do you guys want to continue a little bit more, or do you want guys want to end the stream now? 
keep going if you wish. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. If everyone yeah, else is. Kind of it kind of depends on whenever dinner gets done for me, because it's getting cooked right now. Yeah, okay. So when your dinner is done, then we end the stream. Does that sound fair? Mm-hmm. Sounds fair. Sounds fair. Yep. Yep. Super. Yay. So oh, this is the after stream. <laughs> yeah. So this is the start of the after stream, <laughs> I guess. Don't know what to call it. <laughs> Bonus. Uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully not as long bonus as the one with uh, where I had Fiora and uh, Lightning Bliss and one more that I don't remember. I need to check my archives. There we continued for, I think we had an eight hour stream in total. <laughs> oh, mercy. Yeah, so six hours extra on overtime. Oh yeah, Aeon was nice. it. Thank you so much, Final Sight. So yeah, maybe I should get Fiora on another one and see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, that, is, that would be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Get get the popcorn and get the coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, so, you know. Well, here, have a random floof. Yay, floofier! Floof. That floofer. And I see a zebra. Hmm, wrong floofer. No! It's the floofy floofy. Oh, it's so cute. I gotta show it. That is a baby Aww. cat griffin. Oh, so cute. You can't it look at adorable. that. Yes, you can't look at that one and don't call it the potato. Potato, Like, guys, look at this. Look at this cuteness. Look at this adorableness. Look and behold the floof. The floof, show yourself. The floof. Hello, where's the floof go? Uh, floofy, there you are. Ta-da! Look at this floof. Let's all have a floofy snake. <gasps> floofy snake. Oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> that is Silka's oh. little um, bundle of joy. Hey. It, is a it is a fluffy snake. The boopable snoot. Hey. Oh, actually, I should probably throw in the not Lola, shouldn't I? <laughs> be nice to add in the little bean. Me. And the sheep. <laughs> yeah, very uh very much good luck with the auditioning, uh Big Apple. I hope you get uh I hope you get the role that you want the most. Also <sighs> here, not Lola. She's the little boobable and little bean. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna do this and I'm sure display capture. Thank you. Now I'm just gonna do this. Now I can show everybody the cuteness. Oh, you have a cuteness with you? <laughs> oh my, infinite screen. Yay! <laughs> because now I can just show the Discord chat. <laughs> now I can show all oh, the yes, cute pictures. Sorry. Yes, they're cute and adorable. Ah, uh, um. Let me see if I have any other cute and adorable ones. See, transform. Shape the screen. I think Thank I you still got that wallopied um, image I can draw out. Yes, it's a fuzzy noodle. It's adorable. It is the fuzziest of noodles. The boop. The boop, the boop, the boop, the boop. The boot, the boot, the boot. <laughs> and then we have the also <laughs> we have the cute uh, alley corn zebra alley seep alley seep alley seep that's your name uh, your alley seep just uh want to say dinner just got done so if you guys want to keep going y'all can okay but i got it wrong. okay i'll take care okay okay yeah. you too Later on. take care now <laughs> Bye. Wait, Bye. Empty Man. out. <laughs> what did you say, Poofy? Yeah. yeah. And and the harpy's favorite niece. Long story. Oh, it's the big it's the big horse cousin's floofer. Oh, 
those are wallapeats. They're very, their fur is said to be very, very warm and comfy. So it's kind of like a chinchilla fur, but it can handle the wa uh, water. <laughs> yeah, they're very big. I think these guys are like size huge. Hmm. So elephant? So that would be four by four square. So that would be 20 feet by 20 feet. Big elephant. Got it. <laughs> Yes. Oh. They're used as, they're sort of used as like horses in like really cold areas, mm. and they're quite gentle. Yay. Although you could piss it off a little bit, but uh, you're more likely to see them nice and cuddly. Yay. Sounds like an animal I want to get to know. Oh, that gecko is actually the um, familiar of one of our other characters, um, Anese. That would be Draco. Mm -hmm. It is a dra um, dragonfly gecko. Ah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was adventuring with uh, with Anese's familiars that made me just finally decide to get a familiar for the triplets. <laughs> and. I ended up getting a fun one. Yee, that's nice. <laughs> Duh. Final oh, sight, yeah. why? Baby Mimek. Oh. What did Final Sight do? Wah, 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 wah. Just give me a second, I just need to put on the display capture again. Wah. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, also have a Baby Mimic. Look at this cute is a baby to put on. It's Skiria. Skiria. It's a Skiria. It's adorable. Oh, that's adorable. It's a fluffy cow. It's a fluffy buffalo. Indeed. So fluffy. So cute. A baby. Oh, <laughs> one of the stuff it says to death do us part. Uh, this uh, Skiria Aww. binds to a single companion for a lifetime. It's well known fact that if these loses their partner, they will fall into deep depression and start beating and drinking until they pass away too. Oh, that's not so cute anymore. <coughs> Poor baby. Oh, here. Um, go look at the cute and adorable baby mimic. Yes. Oh, he's a baby backpack. <laughs> Yes, is in the shape of a backpack. Oh my gosh. You have to, in order to actually access the backpack, you have to give it pets. I approve of this. <laughs> I want if, one. If you just um, toothlessly just chew on your hand just a little bit. Um, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> so remember, it, note, it does state toothless small. There's no teeth. It's just going to hold onto your hand. Yeah, so it's just like, Meh, you're mine now. <laughs> yeah, things like that is where I got the idea for one the one character I'm trying to create. A uh, character, I still don't know what class to make them, but every single item they have on their person, from their clothes to their weapons to every last item, all mimics. Oh, actually, here's the image of Anessie now that, now that I brought her up. Anessie is played by Averna. Mm -hmm, okay. <gasps> she, she has a, a turtle shadow. duck! She has a turtle duck. She has a duck. turtle duck. She has a turtle yeah, duck. His name is Tuck. Aww. His name is Tuck. He's adorable. Tuck. Oh my gosh. Is that also a reference to Cor Legend of Korra? Because Tuck, the waterbender that Bolin was playing for uh, that show? I don't think it was a reference. I think it's just her naming scheme because okay. um, the little flying wonder now, um, Draco, is a dragonfly gecko. So, Draco. Gecko. Ah. Dragonfly. Draco. Tuck is a turtle duck. So, Tuck. Yeah. Not fair. Fair. That is quite fair. Yeah, then we've got Selka with uh, with uh, the Bick and Tank. <laughs> Geek. Oh, actually, I can some drop the group photo. Actually, mm -hmm. boop. 
this is the bench field trip three group picture that was put out uh, give it time to load come on take your time discord should be sending now to discord i'm howling at the minute uh so we have satoshi the kitsune over on the left on the right we have the half elf anessi in the middle we have monty who is a um Remnant Dumfanus, he is um, part bear. Uh, his mother was actually uh, Nikita from the from Fee's Ruby um, fan um, uh, game that they ran. They're now um, played by um, Owen Vaughn. Up top is um, Selka, who's played by James. She is a um, essentially a serpent folk, but she's uh, what's called a um, It's whatever the actual D and D term is for the serpent folk. Um, Bye, Apple. Have a good night. I am blinking on the name right now, but yeah, she's sort of just a um, a serpent person. Oh, okay. Then we have down below right now. We have two people. We have Lily the cat folk, and we have Jerry the harpy. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry is an adorable bean as well. Yes. <laughs> She is the feather bean. 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 She is the feather bean. Yeah. Oh, there it is. You on T. Ah, there we go. <laughs> also, speaking of Jerry, here we go. More Jerry! That's the piece that uh, Nairuria had made for Jerry. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the original one before the whole uh, fe uh, the whole Phoenix encounter. Yep. I'm just I'm just thinking like I don't want to be. Now. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm just thinking that um, on the on uh, Rotvik is saying that uh, for a moment the character on the left looked like Doctor Wolf, the one uh, the white. Is it a wolf or is it a fox? In the group wow, photo. Oh, that's a kitsune, so that's a fox person. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes. Satoshi. <laughs> yep, Satoshi. The incredibly sus one. Yes. Final sight, are you trying to make my heart melt because you're succeeding? Oh. <laughs> you guys have the 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 My heart. Actually, yes, that is final sight go. <laughs> guys. My my heart. Yeah. I can make the Coca-Cola kitten into a D&D character! Whee. And for you guys who doesn't remember, Coca-Cola kitten is basically one of my cats who really likes the plastic that the Coca-Cola in Norway comes in, so he uses it as a bed and a hut at the same time. So he basically puts himself into the plastic, so he has... Uh, so it goes around him, so he's just laying there in a tiny hut, but again the hut is too big for him so he it only covers his shoulder and his head but he he's laying there like he's completely covered and just sleeping so the